Okay, so now we are recording. What I've done is taken uh, some translucent clay and I've got just four small pieces of it. And I'm going to be working with alcohol inks and I've got the pinata ink here. There we go. I know you can get that off. And I've chosen three colors that kind of go reasonably well. Uh, this one is labeled Burrow Brown. And this one is Passion Purple. I'm getting a bad reflection on that. And this one is uh, Calabaza Orange. So I've got a, a brown, an orange, and a purple. And I'm going to put just a hint of alcohol ink on each one of these pieces of translucent clay. And I mean just a hint. It's um, first time I tried, I put two drops on and that was way too much. So I am cutting back and on the deciding to err on the side of too little instead of too much so that I get uh, and I'm spreading it out. Uh, what I want to do, what I want is for the alcohol to dry on the clay. Because if I mix it in before it dries, then I end up with some bubbles inside the clay that are nearly impossible to get out. So I'm going to just put it on there and spread it around uh, and let it dry. Sure, he's going to let it dry. Gonna stick to his fingers is what it's going to do. Uh, I've got a paper towel off screen that I'm wiping my finger on. Okay, and I've so I've got three colors there. And while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to take a small piece of white clay. And I'm actually, I'm going to I'm going to wipe my finger on it. Uh, I've got I want a little bit of color in the in the clay. Dead white turns out not to look that great. So if I get a little color in there, and I'm you can see I've got a very thin piece of white. I don't need a lot. Uh, and I've got an incredibly tiny piece of ecru. So I'm going to blend that in. I'm just waiting for the alcohol to dry. And while it's drying, I need to do something because uh, sitting here watching alcohol dry is just tons of fun. I'm going to go off screen for a minute and blend the ecru into the white. I have a qu the... request. Can, can anybody who's, everybody who's not speaking while you're not speaking, please um, mute your, your mic. Otherwise, uh, Zoom keeps switching to you every anytime you make. Um, oh, anytime you make any kind of noise. Thank you. Thank you, Lynette. I should have asked that. Since I am pinned, I don't, I don't see that happening. Try to take, take just a little bit more ecru and put it on there. It's, it, it does not need a lot. I just want just a hint of non-white in my clay. Because Ag agate, putting on my geologist hat, agate is uh, a sodium silicon base, and then it has impurities in it that give it different colors. And so if it's got a slight, just a hint of brown to it, it's, it's, it's actually a fairly normal color for it. And that's got, Oh, I don't know if you can tell. I'm, you can't see it. Okay. There is just a slight difference in color in these two pieces, which is what I'm looking for. So I've now got a piece of white that's kind of worked out. This guy looks like he's dry. So I'm going to fold him with the color on the ink on the inside, because otherwise it's going to come off in my pasta machine. Run him through a few times to get him thoroughly blended. And you'll notice when you run it through, the, uh, where the alcohol is, it does not actually adhere to itself very well. 
So you may need to work on that and be aware that it's going to happen. But just working a bit three or four times through the machine. And I'm running it through on a reasonably thin setting, you can tell. Fold it a couple of times here. And I always fold it so that, or I always run it through so that the air is going to escape out the top end. And there is my orange. I'll do the same thing with the purple. Kind of seal it down to help hold it together. And to run through. It's actually behaving better than the orange did. And now watching me do this live is almost as much fun as watching feed dry. Or to have learned to keep up some sort of chatter while I'm going. There's the purple. The brown. The brown did come apart on me, but that's okay. Like I said, a couple more times through and it takes care of itself. Now do keep in mind that the trans translucent is going to become more translucent as it bakes. So if it looks a little muted right now, it's, it's okay. Um, you may wanna practice a little bit, try and run a few shots to see how much ink you really like in the clay. Uh, I'm actually putting less ink in in this batch than I did in the, the first batch that I showed you. I thought it came out a little dark the first time through. But anyway, there is the brown. I now have these three colors. I've got uh, my, I've got another piece of translucent here, and then the white that I've kind of messed with. My next move or my next step is to take each one of my colors and roll them into something resembling a log. And I want something that's on the order of yeah, maybe two inches long uh, because I'm, I'm going to need to do some twisting and bending on them. So I need enough to work with. So I've got the brown and yeah, I'm pressing on the, the fold to, and then working my way forward to make sure I get the air out of it so that I don't have any air bubbles in this. And pressing hard as I roll it up again to remove any possible air bubbles because I really don't want air trapped in this thing. Uh, I'm not going for a geode, I'm going for an agate. Okay, I've uh, got those three. Now I'm going to take these guys. And I think it's got a little bit of translucent to it. And then I want a little bit of white in there too. Uh, again, it's sodium silica, basic, your basic quartz sand type base material. So I'm going to work with these two guys. That guy is a little cold. Let me run him through the machine once. To and it's single. Get soft. Do the same thing to him. Now these guys, I want roughly the same length as that, but I don't want him, I don't want it to be all white or all uh, translucent. So I'm, what I'm gonna do to start off with translucent on one end. I'm gonna try to start off with white on one end and put in a small block of translucent and then a little bit of white. 
And then just to finish off with translucent for that particular log, it'll give me a nice, it gives me a nice, uh, a nice look when I'm done. Now I'm going to stack these guys up. Just so I've got a nice stack there. And I'm, I'm going to squeeze in the middle because I've got to get, there's air trapped in the middle of this thing. I'm going to start squeezing in the middle and work my way to the sides, to the ends, to get all of the air out of that that's trapped inside. And then again, once I've got that, I'm going to, roll it into a log. By the way, as I'm doing this, everyone knows that when you use your fingers to roll out a log, and I've got several things I'm doing here at one time. One is, as I'm rolling, my you notice my hands are at a 45 degree to the log. That's so that my knuckles to different places along there. If I do it this way, my knuckles hit all, all at the same, the same point all the time, ended up with a little dimples in my log. If I do it this way, then the knuckles keep moving and hit different points. Now they get a much smoother log when I roll it out. And also notice my hands are pulling sideways so that I'm actually doing a little bit of a stretching on the log as it goes too. Just little tidbits of things I do without even thinking about it. But I've kind of got this thing rolled out into a log. It's fairly consistent, fairly tight. And the clay is comfortable to work with. So I'm going to start just twisting it. And I really, really want a lot of twist in this thing because that's going to give me the banding that you see in your agate. Do a little twist and roll. Once a uh, once I've done this about as much as I can, I'm going to roll it out longer. And roll it out where it's four or five inches long, maybe six, doesn't matter. Got a problem there that I'm going to play with separating, so I'm sealing it back up. I'm going to fold it in half, and then I fold it in half a second time so that I've got this funny little shape here going for me. And again, squeeze it starting in the middle, squeeze the air out, squeeze it off towards the ends. Where I folded it, it cracked a little bit, but that's okay. It doesn't matter too much. Back to rolling. Basically, you're, you're doing a basic marbling technique, but then, hey, I got some marble, so it's not that bad. I'm going to go back to, to doing a twist on it. Now, my rule has been that I only do the fold and twist three times. Uh, after about three times, it starts blending, and I don't want it to be blending together. So I, I've got to quit. So I'm going to try and make this one with my third twist and fold. So that's going to have to be where it ends. So I'm going to run this one out a lot thinner than normal. So I've got a lot longer log to work with. That's a nice log. And Except I got it too thin on one end, but I can fix that. Okay, I'm not going to put a lot more twist in the log. Uh, so it's got kind of a, the character I'm looking for in my agate. I'm going to do one more fold process. Make sure you get a good mixture of. The, uh, the colors there. Now this one is going to, I'm, I'm not going to bake it here, uh, but I'll 
but it's going to be uh, have a lot more depth to it than my other one did because I've got a lot less ink, a lot less color in the translucence. It's going to have more of a translucent effect the agate, which is what I was really looking for when we started this. And you can see I've got I've got some nice striping going on there, which is what I'm looking for. So now I've got nice banding in my agate. I'm going to put some more twists on the ends because they don't typically get as twisted as the rest of the clay does. I'm going to think I think this is going to be a pretty good piece of agate for me. Okay. Now, just out of curiosity, I'm going to don't do this yourself, but I'm, I get curious. I'm going to cut it in half and see what the inside looks like. I can, if I'm careful, I can always put it right back together. And the inside looks seriously ugly, so don't do that. But I'm going to put it together. Uh, if it if it doesn't match up exactly, that's okay. Agates have got some cracks in them, some crevices, some creases in them. I think that's an idea. I can just shift this just a little bit so that my bands have got a, a break in them, uh, which does exist on a lot of agate. Now I've got the look I'm going for here. I'm working my seam together because I should not have done that. And again, if, if you drag, the agate's never perfectly smooth. The lines aren't always straight, so that you're okay there. Uh, what I then did to make these pieces, these pieces, taking a look at this, I decided where I wanted, and you'll notice this. Uh, I don't know where I got this. Um, I've got a nice shape here that I that I use, and my wife likes to use to to beat around. So she makes cabochons. I make cabochons for her to use in her beading work. And I'm just going to push this thing into that. And this is where it's easy to make a mistake. So I'm going to cut this guy off using the sharp side of the blade. Push him in as much as I can. Push him in as hard as I can and firm. And then I'm going to actually just pull him out as is. And OK, I can tell I've got a little blemish right here, but I don't have any cracks. So I'm going to seal up that little blemish drag the, the agate around, maybe put a few more deviations in the agate, put him back in, and again, press in real firmly this time, trying to get everything in there and looking nice and sealed up well. And then I can take my blade and holding the clay down, just drag it almost against the surface of my mold. And that should give me a nice cap. There we are. And if uh, that'll make a nice, a nice uh, focal piece on a necklace. I've got lots of clay left over. Uh, I can actually take this piece that I cut and uh, do a little bit of work with him, marble him up a little bit. And that actually is in a good shape. And I could probably just push him back in here. And again, I'm gonna, before I cut it off, I'm going to check and make sure I've got a good seal. I didn't do this on the first two. That's why I had creases in them. And as I check this guy, uh, he is without a problem. So putting back in, be very careful putting them back in, make sure you get it in there right, nice and smooth. 
Oh. And then cut him off. And there we go. And I know better than that. I've got the grain of the agate roller running top to bottom, set aside to side. It actually looks better if you run it side to side, you'll notice. Uh, I wasn't thinking when I did that. And just to be complete, I'm gonna run one more through there. Make sure I've got, this time I'm gonna make sure I've got the grain running side to side. This one has got a crack in it to begin with, so I'm gonna to have to be very, very careful. I'm really gonna push it in firmly and squeeze the clay down and press it in. And again, if, I if I'm careful taking them out, then I can, I've got a, okay, I've, here I've got a crack right here. You probably doesn't, it probably doesn't show up on the camera, but as I look at it, I've got a crack right there in my agate. I can use my fingernail to seal it. Fix that problem. And if I'm very, very careful, I can get him back in almost exactly the way he was. Press the clay in and down to make sure I get it well sealed. And I'm being slightly paranoid at this point because I want to take him out one more time. Oh yeah, crack's gone. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. No, that was, all of that was done with one quarter of a block of translucent clay. Uh, so just give you an idea of how much, how far it goes. So I've got, I've got those guys, uh, those three nice cabs out of it. I've got some earrings that I can make out of this piece. I may marble it a little bit more to get uh, to do better with the earrings. Uh, but that is basically what I do for the agate. Uh, now, in case you're wondering, uh, I don't have a piece that my wife has done, but she likes to do bead beadwork around this and actually makes a bezel uh, beading around these. Uh, I personally wire wrap them. So I'll take uh, three strands of uh, square uh, half hard silver wire or something and uh, bind them together with other silver wire wrap around this thing and, and do some twist operation and create a bezel. Uh, you can uh, glue a bezel onto this if you want so that you can take one of these and glue a bezel on the back. Uh, and it will make a nice focal piece. Or uh, you uh, can also drill through, drill through these. In fact, if you take some of the smaller ones I've got, I can actually drill through up here somewhere and uh, create a nice, a nice little earring uh, on these smaller ones. So at this point, are there any questions on the agate? No questions? Okay, uh, we're half an hour into my demo and I thought it wasn't going to take as long as I, as, as, it, as, as time allowed. So I have prepared a second demo. This is my second demo. What I've, Put that on different colors so it shows up a little better. Oh. That light really does make things go blurry. Uh, I have taken uh, white clay and translucent and some uh, black acrylic ink and tried my hand at making marble. And I think it didn't come out too bad. So, With if there's no more questions, no discussion, I shall proceed.
This one goes really quick. I have taken a quarter of a block of white clay and a quarter of a block of translucent clay. Um, a marble, again, never mind. Uh, sorry, too much of a gel is in me. I've got these two sheets of clay. Marble, it's got a little bit of translucency to it. So I decided to take the white and mix it with the with, with the translucent to get something that's going to give me a little bit more depth to it. And so to do that, I'm going to simply take these two sheets and run them through my pasta machine. And fold them once or twice, run them through again. Then I'm gonna turn them into a log. And I, I don't want them fully blended because marble isn't just solid uniform color. So I'm gonna take this log, make sure I've got the air out of the middle and go back to my favorite, let's just do a twist and fold on him. Just again, kind of working him to where he's a little bit softer. He's been sitting off the side for two hours, so he's not really as soft as I'd like to work with. But we get this that kind of worked out. Put some twist into it. He is stiff. So I'm going to have to be careful with my twisting. It's easier to twist it sometimes if your hands aren't too far apart, but then it means you need to move from one end of the log to the other. We do the twisting. Smooth it out a bit. Get it down to where it's fairly uniform in length, or uniform in diameter. And then going to again fold it. I'm not going to do my usual because he is stiffer than I thought. But I can get him together. I would have thought as warm as my hands are that it would warm up the clay, but it's not happening. But actually, this isn't overly critical as I think about it because of the next step. But it's it's me. I'm gonna do a little bit of last twisting on him. Folding just to kind of get things uh, reasonably blended. I want something close to a nice blend here. Doesn't need to be overly uh, blended. And I'm going to run it to the pasta machine again on the thick setting here. Uh, take a look at what I've got. It needs another run or two. Uh, once you're placed in the pasta machine, just to help blend it, get the color a little more uniform. And the pasta machine is making up color and depositing it on the clay. You can see I've got a stripe in there now, but I'm not going to worry about that. Okay, uh, it's fairly uniform in color. I've got slight variation, which does not show up in the camera. But I'm having that, I'm going to take my blade. So I'm going to want him thicker for what I'm doing. So I'm going to hold him in half, squeeze him, get on the, on the fold just to make sure I get the air out. I've got a brayer here, so I'm going to run over once again to get make sure I get the air out of him. 
and pull them a second time, squeeze the fold. There's a reason for this, so I'll, I'll explain in just a minute. And again, rolling to get the air out. What I'm going to go for is I want chunks that are somewhere between a quarter of an inch and half an inch in size. So I'm just going to start cutting this guy into pieces. And for those of you that don't know, I am a mathematician and random is really, really hard for me to do. Um, so I tend to have things in nice geometric lines to begin with. And then if I think about it, I'll come back in and chop it in some odd directions just to kind of get some odd shapes in there. Now, if I've done it right, I should have a pile of broken pieces that are random shapes, roughly a quarter inch or so in size. I, want them, I really want to break them up. Is this is going to be the basis of the marble. And there we are. That's nicely broken up. Uh, and before I do the next step, I'm going to avoid a mistake. We've got a sheet of wax paper I just put down. Because the next step is going to get really, really, really messy. Okay, good. Shows up well in the wax paper. So I've got these guys all broken up, nice chunks. Checking to make sure I've got fairly well cut up. Make sure how many pieces that are hanging together. Uh, nice. I'll move that off to the side for a minute. I've got a little tray here that I use to mix colors in. I'm going to take black acrylic paint. Now this is uh, fairly liquid to begin with. It's not completely liquid, but it's reasonable. And for now, I'm just going to put a little for the demo. I'm just going to put just a little bit in here. Now that is a lot thicker than what I really want to work with. Um, see, it's you can see it's got a lot of a lot of stiffness to it, a lot of character to it. So I'm gonna put a drop or two, and I mean just a drop or two of water in this. Okay, we'll put two drops of water in there. Let's see how this goes. Uh, this is, it's easy to make a mess with this and get, get it too, too liquid. And two drops of water was a little bit more than what I needed, it turns out. But that's okay. Uh, you start off small. Well, actually, it's yeah. I think just a little bit more ink is what we need to help the process along. I want something that's. I want it to be reasonably liquid, but not runny. So I'm going to add just a little bit more ink to that. Scrape off my piece there. Set that aside. Set it aside, he said. Okay, and we're gonna go back to mixing. Okay. Um, you see, I've got, I've got a little bit of a glob in there that's hanging on, but for the most part, it's not too bad. Okay. Uh, no, I don't have enough ink to do the full demo. So I'm going to take a little bit off this, a little bit of play just to kind of give you an idea of what I'm doing. And hopefully this will be enough to work with for the sake of this demo. Normally I'd have a lot more ink. And with a lot more ink, I can cover everything. And I may actually end up doing that if I can't get this out of the dish. Okay, failing that. Uh, 
I'm going to take these guys and put them in my dish because the goal is to get them all, everything covered with ink. I, I really want them just covered to where they are black with ink. So I've got them, I've got them started. I obviously need more ink. because it is not going far enough, but that's why you take small steps and see how much you've got going for you. By the way, my fingers are black. Uh, just, it's gonna have to be, I'm gonna have to deal with that later. But you can see they're coming out reasonably well coated. I'm gonna put a couple more drops of water in the dish. Make a little bit more of the black. Partially because it's fun doing this. Get the ink in there. I yeah, know, watching me do this is just a highlight of your day. These are the games you end up playing, trying to get this done. How much liquid, how much ink, how much water, how much of this, how much of that? That should. That's okay. Get... That's the way I would end up having to do it, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lynette. Okay. Now I'm just going to, again, mix this stuff up. Get it. Oh, good. That's coming out reasonably well, make sure I've got ink on all the pieces, got all sides covered. Uh, and you can see things are coming out reasonably black here, which is what I'm looking for. Now I'm going to take this off camera for a minute and do a little bit of work. Right. I'm actually gonna take some Purell wipes off. And, there is a way to open this package, I think. I don't see what it is. I will open it the hard way. Fighting my way into a package of Purell wipes. Oh, it helps if you take the blade that's on top of the table instead of underneath the wax paper. Oh, it says open here. That works easier. Okay. Get some of this ink off my fingers. It's just going to make a mess if I pursue much with the ink still on there. Uh, let me take this off camera for just a minute. The magic of working off camera is when I take it off camera. I can then bring it back on camera and you see it's all nice and mixed up. Uh, doing things on camera is wonderful for that. Now, uh, what I've done here is to let this dry. So it's actually taken about an hour for the acrylic paint to dry on there, but it is now fairly dry. And everything is nicely well covered with black acrylic paint. So I can then take this stuff. He said it's, and it is attached itself to my wax paper. Maybe it hasn't fully dried. There we go. You see not all the pieces got covered. Take a bigger blade and scrape them off. Being careful not to cut through the wax paper because I don't want a bigger mess than what I've got. I've already cut through the wax paper. Okay, I've got these guys pretty much broken loose. There's a few stray pieces that I'll come back and pick up later when I'm off camera. I'm gonna have more time to play. I'm just gonna take this and smash it together. So 
squeeze it down into a nice chunk. You can see I didn't quite get as much black on there as, as I thought I had, but that's okay. Don't need it to be uniform. I don't need it any particular pattern in there. I just need it to get smashed together. You said, and then if I take this ugly thing, I'm going to flatten him out just a touch and take a blade and cut through this, trying to cut the face off. And there we have a nice piece of marble. Everyone see that? Let me turn that light down a little bit. Mm. There. And it's, it's that easy. But I've got a nice sheet of marble there. Uh, I can use that to wrap around the bead. I can use it as a surface technique on anything I'm working on. What I thought about doing is I could uh, cut a slice through that so that it's uh, you know about the thick setting on my pasta machine and match it with something else, maybe a piece of uh, graphite polymer or some other color and make a, a blended pendant, you know, half one, half of one thing, half of another, uh, earrings. Uh, I don't do earrings for myself, but I could, I could do some nice marble earrings with that, uh, any number of things. So anyway, uh, that was... Just an yeah. observation. It just yeah. seems when you're covering the, those pieces with black, it looks so black. <laughs> that I, I thought, you know, is there going to be a lot of black on here? But but no, it did. It worked out so that there's only actually a little bit of black. Right. Uh, the the re because yeah. of the pieces. Yeah. Yeah. The, the size of the pieces. This is back to I wanted the pieces to be no smaller than than a quarter of an inch, and uh, you know, larger than that, so that although it's really really black, uh, I've got mostly white with just a thin black sheet over the top. And so now I've got black fractures in the midst of my marble. Anyway, uh, questions, comments, observations. I did want to ask what type of translucent you're using because I have a I hate translucent. It's so hard to work with. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am. Uh, I'm working with the Primo translucent. Primo, okay. Uh, now I've got, you know, I, most of what I do is with Primo. Um, I, I started off using Simo years ago, but um, started playing with some of the mic effects I can get with a Primo, and I could get a much better effect with Primo than I could with Fimo. And so I switched to Primo as my primary clay. Uh, I've tried, I've tried Pardo, I've tried Cato clay. Uh, I've tried Cernet. Cernet's nice. I do like Cernet, but uh, Cato clay, uh, in all honesty, the, the smell of it uh, bothers me. Uh, the, the, the vinyl is something I've never been able to get used to. And I do have a little bit of a trouble around it. Uh, I seem to have a small allergy to it. So I'm a little cautious around Cato. I can I can work with it if I have to, but after a while I've got to take a break. Uh, I'm I'm with you on the smell of the Cato, <laughs> but but I will have to say that the Cato black shines up the best. You get the blackest shiniest finish with the Cato black. Uh, yeah. Uh, just let me let me let me let me. Uh, sorry, I'm somewhere. Oh. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording.